Tony's Topics, Tony's Topics, Tony's Topics. What's happening, folks? My name's Tony. Welcome to Tony's Topics. What do I want to talk about today? Let's get into the Clippers versus the Grizzlies. This game happened over the weekend on Sunday, and it was depressing. I mean, honestly, I'm going to say go Grizzlies. This is great that they're having this breakout season, but it was just so depressing. Anybody who watches the show knows that I'm an uh, avid Clippers fan. You know, I've kind of, like, bet on them taking it home, and so... uh they're like, it's just depressing the way that they're doing it. And really, really what's so sad about it is the fact that the Clippers are not learning from past experiences. All I'm saying is, by now, Doc Rivers, I would, I would think, would frantically be changing some things around. Hey, Doc, let's talk about some basic facts. Number one, uh, there are eight teams in the West that have won 60% of their games or more. And the Clippers are not one of them. Now, there's 15 teams in the West. Eight of them are going to make the playoffs. Six, now, out of those eight teams that I've mentioned before, 60, they've won 60% of their games. And you are not one of them. You have not won 60% of your games. It's terrible. Maybe on the East Coast that stuff flies, but on the West Coast, you can't get away with stuff like that. In the Western Division, you cannot get away with stuff like that in basketball. So, what's the problem? Because I see you're trying some stuff. Slowly but surely, you're trying some stuff. You got Jamal Crawford back in his correct position. You know, basically being your sixth man, coming in in second quarter and really taking over. And he's back to getting his 20 points. Kudos. You've reduced the minutes on Matt Barnes and stopped treating him like this guy needs to get a 30, like he's a 36-minute player. Because he's not. Kudos. Great. Now, the next big step, Doc. You've got to take Blake Griffin out of the power forward position. Let's just be honest. Any great power forwards in the game, they typically could vouch as being the center for the team. A lot of times they will be played as the center when certain rotations go in. I mean, think about it. LaMarcus Aldridge for the Portland Trailblazers can easily be the center. He's a monster. Uh, Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan for the Spurs could easily be, a, be the center. Quite often, he is the center when they're in certain rotations. He's guarding the center, at least. Um, who else? I mean, there's so many guys that could be, you know, typical power forwards that could be thought of as the center. I don't know. I could go on and on, but I really just don't feel it. Oh, Anthony Davis? Anthony Davis? Anthony Davis. Yeah, uh, that guy could be the center. Okay, we could go on and on, and I could keep checking the records. Bottom line, what I'm saying is this. In no way would you ever think that Blake Griffin ever should be the center. Ever. Blake Griffin is not someone who wants to go down there and bash with guys and get rebounds. That's not him. So he's not the power forward because all a power forward is is a backup center that can pretty much play, shoot some shots away from the basket. That's all they are. You know, they, they have better shooting, but what you really want them to do is go in there and grab some rebounds. I mean, the, the concept of the Twin Towers was discovered with when Tim Duncan met David Robinson back in 1999. Okay, and the Spurs won that first ring with Tim Duncan. Hey, two big guys underneath means we win. Sweet. Okay, Popovich figured this thing out 15 years ago. All right? So all I'm saying is Blake Griffin is an amazing player, but a lot of times in many of the games you've had him playing in, he's underperforming. And he's underperforming, you know, sometimes he'll do well at that position, but a lot of times he's doing bad, and you've really got to get his consistency up. And the way to do that is by playing him at the small forward instead of the power forward position. He's getting beat up under there, Doc. I mean, what does it take to realize it? Now, you're figuring some stuff out, and i got to give kudos to the Clippers for that. You know, you're starting to change up your rotations, and honestly, also I would say, these guys look tired out there. Blake Griffin is sweating his butt off out there, okay? Maybe you want to switch over to a six-minute rotation kind of thing. Like, uh, it's clear Chris Paul, Blake Griffin, and DeAndre Jordan like playing together. So maybe you want to pair them with two guys who really are going to do much major scoring. I played Blake Griffin at small forward. So maybe you run Glenn Davis as your power forward. And then, I don't know, uh, whoever else, you know, as your shooting guard and stuff. But not, I wouldn't run Jamal Crawford or... Uh, or uh, J.J. Redick at that position. I use them as the second team coming in to provide more uh, scoring. And, like, you know, that way, you know, you put one of your other guys as shooting guard. Then you, you know, rest them for six minutes, bring in J.J. Crawford, uh, bring in J. 
uh, whatever his name is, Crawford, bringing Crawford at small forward instead of power forward because that guy really likes to handle the ball anyway. Anybody who sees him play knows he likes to handle the ball. Then, you know, run him with, uh, run him with J.J. Uh, Redick, run him with Redick, and then uh, I would say put down uh, that kid. Oh, my gosh, Spencer Hawes. I don't know, brain freezes, whatever. And run him with Spencer Hawes. Then, you know, fill it in, I don't know, with Turkaloo and Matt Barnes. And that would be your second team. Maybe stagger these guys out. First quarter, six minutes, you know, then six minutes for the second team. Same with the second quarter, same with the third quarter. By the end of the third quarter, everyone have 18 minutes. And then the players who have really been showing up in the game, you'd let them play out the rest of the 12 minutes in the fourth. Okay, because it's going to be clutch time anyway, and it's time for the final home stretch. And that wouldn't have any of your players playing longer than 30 minutes per game. So, and I think that would just be much more beneficial. But the bottom line is this. All of your cylinders are firing on a consistent basis. You know, and make no doubt, Blake Griffin is consistent, but he could be an absolute monster at small forward. He's fast enough for it, Doc. Please catch on. That's my time.